I always see it like you're driving in a car and the oil light goes on. Um, if you took the Western doctor's mechanism, it would be like, well, you could take the fuse out that removes the light. So then you don't have that annoying light in your dashboard saying that you need an oil change, you know. Joshua, how did you find Carnival? Well, it, it's it's interesting actually. Um, I, I've been part of the, the like the Bitcoin space since very, very, very early. Um, working, the, I, I love the the idea of disrupting banks. I just don't like the fiat system, right? So I was in there uh, working away, and somehow the Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, early Bitcoiners have this ability of detecting trends very early, um, and. One of the things, this was way before uh, the Petersons came along and started making it more mainstream uh, with Jordan Peterson and his daughter. Um, a, a few of the Bitcoins were going on about steaks all the time. Like, let's have a steak party and I only eat meat. And, and I was like, what are you on about, dude? Like, what's your cholesterol? <laughs> you know, all that normal stuff that you generally think of. But funnily enough, there's this interesting side where I I love contemplating about how would society function without a state, for instance, right? How, how would you build the roads and all these sorts of things? And for a lot of people, that concept is so weird, so far out that they get angry even thinking about it. And I found that that was the same. I was getting the same reaction to people that were saying I was only eating meat. I was like thinking to myself, hang on, Matt. when I when I talk to people about, uh, you know, oh, how would how would you have like separation of money and state? How would you develop without like if they didn't have the ability to tax? How do you start to build roads? Just conceptualizing. Well, if you take the same thing with meat or diet, like how do you live when you're only eating meat? How what's your cholesterol? What's all this sort of stuff? let's have an open mind. And so I started having a bit more of an open mind about that. And because I was suffering with a lot of different ailments at the time, um, I, I wanted to find a way of dealing with these ailments. So if, if, just to list the ailments, it was, uh, I had a quite really bad psoriasis uh, problem, all, uh, mainly on my face. It does flare up every so often still, but um, only if I have cheat days. <laughs> <laughs> where I uh, eat some sugar uh, or some, uh, you know, I barely eat sugar raw like that, but some carbohydrates. Um, uh, so, so that was an issue, and I had um, uh, irregular heartbeats, and I would have uh, sore joints. I would get mass numb hands about, uh, I don't know, thirty times a night. So I'd be waking up constantly with numb hands. And it wasn't because I was sleeping on the hand. It would be the other hand as well sometimes. Like it would always just uh, and I always thought it was something in my spine that was compressing or something down the arms. And so I had all these ailments and uh some of these Bitcoin early Bitcoiners were like, I only eat meat. Um and yeah, that's when I just started to sort of look down that rabbit hole with more interest. Um, and funnily enough, at that time, I was raw vegan, um, and I was doing the raw vegan thing way before that sort of became popular too, because I, I really thought that was uh, optimal because, you know, lots of colors and salads and, and uh, you know, the, eating all the, the colors, basically. And, um, and while I think that, I, I don't think it should be thrown out with the bathwater either, like fully. Uh, I think everyone's microbiome is different, but, uh, but it, didn't, it didn't work for me at all. And I don't see it working for a lot of people. I have seen it working for some people though. So, you know, I think that, that this is where it's also very difficult to be human because we seem to be the only species that don't know how to eat. <laughs> We're so confused by, you know, like by it all. Um, but saying that, uh, I, I had all these ailments and I, I, I just sort of laughed, didn't laugh, but I just thought it was ridiculous only to eat meat. And, but what I did, did notice very early on, and I remember saying this to one of the guys that was only eating meat is saying that 
I think what it is is that going on a mono diet allows you to repair because you cut out all of the nonsense. And I feel that a lot of the microbiome is where a lot of the root causes of problems are. Like you might have bacteria that you picked up along the way or from your parents that uh, cause you depression or massive acne or psoriasis or you might have had medication um, uh, either in here or wherever that caused you to have autoimmune issues along the way, which caused your gut bacteria to grow and flare up. Or you might have been put on antibiotics. Like I was, when I was a teenager, big acne problems. <laughs> and I, can't, I still can't believe it that the doctors put me for a year on antibiotics for a whole year for acne, for acne. Uh, it, it, absolute madness absolute madness um the uh yeah and so uh yeah i de definitely uh was interested in understanding how by removing everything going more on a mono diet allowed you because i allowed you to start to kill off the bad bacterias and and sort of cultivate the most uh the bacteria that uh are basically are probably the most important ones and what i started to really get at later on was that meat had everything in it that i needed and, and none of the other stuff that i could be allergic to and when i started to dive deeper down the rabbit hole of a lot of the lectins and the different ways that plants defend themselves. Um, I thought there's something really, really interesting to this. And if you break down all of the proteins that the body needs down to amino acids or the amino acids that the body needs, everything is is good there. And of course, you go down this path of, oh, well, um, scurvy, vitamin C, where do I get that? For? You know, all of this stuff. and 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 funnily enough, since going carnivore, I have not been sick once in a year and a half. I haven't been sick once. It's unbelievable. I haven't even had a sniffle. Um, so that that's yeah, that's kind of the <laughs> the long and the short of it there, Dave. But um, but along the way, also uh, in my thirties, I had a, a heart surgery for a congenital uh, issue as a, as a birth defect. So I had a, uh, a misshapen heart valve, aortic heart valve. And uh, that was causing the aortic root, which is the main, the main artery coming off the heart, leading up the arm, uh, splitting off to the brain and the arm. Uh, uh, that, that was starting to blow out uh, quite large at the root base. And the, so the doctors were like, Josh, are you getting, I was starting to get pains and stuff, chest pains. And they were like, look, we'd rather repair this now because if there's a fracture in there while you're on the bus, you've basically got 15 minutes to get to hospital, if that. So you're better off preemptively sur doing surgery on that. And um, and so, yeah, um, I got that fixed when I was around about 34 or something like that. Um, uh, and uh, and now I'm uh, yeah 47. So uh, I've been... You know, and along the way, that, that after the surgery, they had to put a pacemaker in because they some of the scar tissue that caused from the surgery caused me to have a bit of a heart block as well. Between uh, in my AV node, which is the node that sends the electrical signal down from the top chamber to the bottom chamber, so the bottom chamber just doesn't get a signal. The top chamber does from my body, uh, and the 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 pacemaker basically listens to my top top chamber and then paces my lower chamber accordingly yeah um and then i uh, yeah that, that was actually <laughs> that's a funny story i had to hack my pacemaker because uh, i had issues uh, programmatic issues for years and i just no cardiologist was getting to the bottom of it and they wanted to open me up and burn pits of my heart off because it was having uh, basically what was happening is that if i reached above i think it was um 120 bpm um a bit beats per minute it it would 
drop me as soon as I hit 120, it would drop me down to 50. And so I'd just be walking up some stairs and then and I'd just be, it would be like a wall hitting me. And it would always happen over and over. And it was progr- it was very like on 100. I, I remember getting one of the very first watches that could read your heart through light, uh, read your pulse, and um, just measuring it because I was like, I'm sure it's always happening around the same time when I'm exercising. And uh, yeah, no, no, I went to so many cardiologists and they just didn't know how to fix it. They were like, oh, I, don't, I, I, I think you've got to basically be on either beta blockers for life or we've got to... Um, uh, we've got to burn some extra nodes off your heart to stop electricity getting to it. <laughs> I was like, this sounds weird because I'm pretty sure this is a pacemaker issue. Like it's it's always happening at 120. It's not organic and sort of random. Anyway, I can I, I can go into that story if you want about how I hacked the pacemaker to fix it. But um, but fundamentally, the whole carnivore thing was uh, uh, me looking back or all these issues I was having and the main one being numb hands because it was causing me not to sleep very, very well. Um, and snoring as well, uh, which that, and, and, and wanting to solve that and cut and the, and the psoriasis, uh, was really shocking all the flaky skin and, and inflammation basically. Yeah. And those things have cleared up. Yeah. To like my psoriasis to 95%. Um, like I said, sometimes, uh, if I go to a friend's house and they've cooked something, I'm not going to say no, uh, uh, to it. Like I'll eat a little bit of it. Uh, I won't like scoff myself, but, um, I generally, I, I try to stay as carnivore as possible if I can control my environment. But if, uh, if I go to someone's house and they've spent time cooking something i'm not going to be all no 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 about it generally they know i eat a lot of meat so they'll they'll just cook some nice meat and they'll put some toppings or whatever on there you know um but uh but yeah and then then i'll notice definitely it'll flare up like i'm i'm having a little bit of a flare up here you can maybe see a little bit but it's nowhere near like it used to be just red massive red patches and really really itchy i couldn't even have a beard because it would itch so hard um and then when i shave it would be big swaths of redness my scalp would be flaky like crazy and um yeah and i think this might have been and i have no data on this but it's just a gut feeling that (laughs) literally that it had something to do with the year-long uh antibiotics that the doctors gave me when i was a teenager because it just absolutely decimated my gut bacteria yeah uh, a year of antibiotics is just it just seems crazy yeah well yeah uh yeah 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 yeah, absolutely i think uh, yeah i i I mean i I live in japan and doctors are way too quick to give you antibiotics for anything and it's Mm -hmm. like you've got a virus take some antibiotics why do i need antibiotics for a virus and It's simple, right? It's simple stuff. I, you know, I, I said, I tweeted out the other day um, that why would I go and see a doctor when they're the third, like, why would I respect a doctor's advice when they're the third largest leading cause of death in the US? Uh, uh, like, it, it's kind of laughable at this stage. Obviously, for, for, for my money, doctors are good. Like Western medicine are good at one thing, and that's if you fall off your motorbike and they need to patch you back together. They need to put you back together. If they need to cut out the, the valve in your heart and put a mechanical valve in there, amazing, absolutely phenomenal what we can do. But the foundation of Western medicine being A, corrupted with a profit motive, which is game theoretically, um, not aligned with the health of the individual and mix that with um, the fact that doctors pretty much do like a week of nutrition uh, in their, t- I don't know what, six to 12 years of studying. I, it's, it's absolutely bonkers. It's insane. And, and that the industrial pharmaceutical industry basically runs, owns, operates the entire uh, learning process and onboarding for doctors so that they become basically drug dealers. And um, and this is just unfortunate because 
then if you go and see a doctor, all you're really getting is something to patch something. So it's I almost see it like you're driving in a car and the oil light goes on. Um, if you took the Western doctor's mechanism, it would be like, well, you could take the fuse out that removes the light. So then you don't have that annoying light in your dashboard saying that you need an oil change, you know. That's such a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really is, right? I mean, that that's kind of how I feel Western medicine. They, they, they get rid of the oil light and say, look, it's, it's not annoying you anymore. But the underlying issue of the oil being screwed is now getting worse and worse by the day because you're, high, you're covering up the fact that you can't see that annoying light. And the benefit for them is that when your car eventually seizes, you're going to have to take it back to them to find out, okay, well, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. So you found out about carnivore through being involved with Bitcoin. Um, what What is the... What what is the similarity between people that are that are interested in Bitcoin and are also get interested in carnivore? Is it just a, an openness to an alternative? Or yeah, I I, I think so. I think big uh, like specifically, I'm talking here early Bitcoiners that they're a different breed than the than the crypto sort of bros now that are all about like lambos and moons and money like the early ones are about actual change they they are about building um uh actual change from from what we've got from the status quo like get you know and quite um they they think in a way that is a subversive but b counterintuitive as well and there's there's a lot of um if the mainstream is thinking one way i'm going to i'm going to look at the other way and so sometimes that's there's a bit of pain that can happen there because most of the time any mainstream information has been drummed into you a lot so there's this cognitive dissonance concepts where if you believe something strongly enough it's painful to admit to yourself that you you're wrong, um, and somehow I think the early Bitcoiners have an have an ability to not feel that as hard, because your whole life you're told that the money is good <laughs> that you've got that that uh, and uh, or whatever, and and now you're going to say. Hey, uh, no, use this whole weird thing and this weird software. I mean, back in the day, it was really unknown. You got to, like, it was just, you couldn't buy anything. You could just buy some alpaca socks from some strange farmer in Sweden or something. You know, it's, um, uh, and so, and there's another thing as well, but uh, with early Bitcoiners, they were also, I, I found, maybe it's just the circles I'm in, but they were one of the first to sort of call, the last four years that we went through out as wrong uh, as this is the wrong direction um, a, a, funny uh, they actually because they're good at exponential curves and understanding exponentiality which is a lot of people aren't uh, really good at um i think they saw they were the first to sort of quickly go and get masks and 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 rice and <laughs> sort of stock up because there's a little bit of a prepper in each one of these early bitcoiners too but they very quickly switched because the, the cognitive distance isn't as strong in them i i believe maybe i'm totally wrong here but um that they quickly switched to the other side and went hang on this is uh, this is out of control there's there's a mass psychosis going on here and um and a lot of the early Bitcoiners, while they were first to prep, they were first to remove the masks way before everyone else and, and just get on with life and realize that there's uh, other ways of dealing with um, what was happening. You know, <laughs> I'm they trying realized... to stay away from words here because... Yeah, no uh, worries. They, they realized pretty early on that they didn't actually need six months worth of toilet paper in their house. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What a weird time that was. What a strange, strange time. And 
But they, they also realized that the solution that was being drummed and forced onto everybody was, um, was ridiculous because a lot of them early ones are very intelligent people. They're intelligent in not only in cryptography and math, but also in pattern recognition. And so um, a, a lot of them would see that, hang on a minute, why are they banning uh, really aggressively other treatments uh, and, and, and sort of piecing together puzzles here? Um, but yeah, so, so that also plays into dietary understanding of, hey, um, there's something that's totally weird here. I'm going to put away my cognitive dissonance of, ah, oh, veggies and the food pyramid and everything that we've learned um, and, and say that, no, just eating meat and butter and fat and, and stuff. And, you know, there's, there's layers of the cognitive dissonance because after Atkins died, there was massive amounts of pressure about how terrible his philosophies were as well. And so, so there's layers of, of societal pressure, which, which I want to, you know, go back to the pressure we all felt during the last four years from society and this, this split of, you know, anti versus uh, pro and the vast majority of anybody, mainly anybody that had a television on and, and the more amount of time they had the television on, the more they probably got this and, um, and forced you to get your kids done too um and so that's that that pressure uh early bitcoiners i i noticed had an immunity to this sort of societal pressure a, a little bit of an immunity to that and so uh, i don't know if i'm making sense here but since we we said okay meat's bad reduce meat uh, and reduce saturated yeah. fat and eat sugar and eat, eat your carbohydrates and all this kind of thing. Things have mm. got worse. They've got better. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And I, I mean, I feel that I feel that there was this middle ground of keto that allowed carnivore to become more accepted over the last, you know, few years. Uh, I think that the fact that the keto diet became very mainstream very quickly which is that lean towards the atkins thing um allowed some of that some of that legacy pressure of fat bad uh meat carcinogen um all of this to sort of fall away a little bit the main the, the one of the big things for me though really one of the things stopping me was more of a uh, ethical standpoint of the mal treatment of animals in factory farming and that was you know as a raw vegan as a as a person that loves animals loves nature i uh, you know and you see some film horrific films and i can barely watch them like earthlings uh where uh, you know and this some of this vegan propaganda which which is very valid a lot of it is valid the, the, the sick way that humans farm animals uh, in some ways, not, not always, um, gives a very, very, very awful feeling for me just wanting to eat meat. But I've got to say, I've been carnivore for a year and a half. I don't think I would have eaten a full cow yet. Like, the, the, I... I'm pretty sure I kill way less animals now than I do did when I was raw vegan because of all the massive amounts of animals, rabbits, birds, insects that are massacred um, by farmers to protect the uh, the vegan crops, and so that that's kind of uh, made it easier for me. Plus, I, I really put effort into sourcing uh well um treated animals uh, as much as possible obviously i can't always but i try to get um uh, you know i try to find organic or biodynamic farmers or you know small scale farmers 
which is easier in Australia to do than it is in other places. So, so you can buy direct in a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah, enough? yep, yep. There's there's great little farms that, um, and one one of the things that's really helped me is uh, getting a, a chest freezer um, because then you can have that in the in the shed and just stack that up and and have uh, quality produce. But yeah, the, the the ethical thing was a hard hurdle to get over. Um, it was it was after just l again looking at statistics and moving away from the uh, and and this play again with economics. Uh, economics is an interesting one because it, it explains a lot in life. A lot of part of economic theory is you you always see the scene, but you don't see the unseen. So, for instance, when uh, uh, someone from the government says, we're going to create uh, new schools and hospitals, um, you see the jobs that are done, made, you see the hospital, but you don't see the unseen. And what do I mean by that is you don't see what would have been made with the money that was extracted from the public. Um, you don't see what would have happened with that uh, if it wasn't taxed away from the public. Maybe they would have built um, a private hospitals or they would have, I don't know, built more jobs and that would have created... I, you, you don't know what... So the unseen is very hard to determine. So this is the same with, uh, with, with the idea of the meat. The scene is killing the animal so you can eat it. The unseen is all the animals that are destroyed and the life forms that are destroyed growing non-animal crops, um, the amount of chemicals that are sprayed onto these crops, uh, the, the amount of um, uh, different uh, synthetic fertilizers and, and uh, things that are sprayed onto these crops uh, and into the soil and c cultivated into the soils, is is absolutely immense, and one one of the one of the big things that also I, I found fascinating was the idea that uh, the the desification of the earth is 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 quite real, and um, and I think this is kind of, could be part of like different climates changing a little bit is mainly because the desification of 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 the earth and. What what have humans done? Well, they've re removed herding animals, and if we have herding animals, we we keep them in small areas and they destroy that bit of land because they're just stomping over and over. Whereas herds would stomp shit in one place, the stomp that down into the ground. That would start to bring up some green. Um, they would move on, then they'd come back and eat some of that, and other herds would come and stomp on that and and uh, manure would you know, fertilize. And this greening would also cause the precipitation of, uh, of clouds. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. But uh, the, the way that the, the cloud and uh, ground interact with m when there's green is that you get some more rain and then the rain causes the, you know, and so there's a cycle there. But as soon as you stop doing that and you remove, remove herding animals, you get large amounts of desert. So I started to realize that it is actually good to have more cattle, to have more uh, people consuming cattle because that demand then causes, it's just how do we treat those cattle? Uh, and and this, is, this is still a challenge for people because we're so about fences and <laughs> property lines when these, these animals really need to herd um, along large distances to be able to help um nature yeah it's interesting um to think about what you've just said in that you know the people that are shouting the most about climate change are probably the people that are you know promote you know advocates of what's more likely to have caused it if it indeed is is something that you know is happening yeah absolutely i mean it, it, exactly the, the idea that cows cause all this methane and that's terrible is, is such, such a distorted, demented view. 
Uh, and it it's it's again very very close to the mass psychosis that we saw r- arise through the last four years. The fact that people can start to repeat and repeat and repeat that it becomes normal, and it's this sort of king's new emperor's new clothes sort of thing that everybody because everybody's thinking it you. Everybody can't be wrong. It must be true. It must be true. And it's that innocent child saying, hey, the king's got no clothes. And you, you go, oh, yeah, I'm not crazy. You know, and, and that that then then allows for and this is happening now with the uh with with, with what everybody got uh, uh given this uh, this experiment over the last few years now. People are starting to say, "Oh, I'm not the only one. I'm not going mad. I did feel uh, some damage there, or something, or I've known friends, or whatever's happened." So now people can talk about it, and this psychosis starts to lower. And I feel this is the same thing with uh, the environmental movement: is that they've all gone down a rabbit hole of where a gas, which is absolutely normal and it's actually lower levels than i I mean this is a whole whole other massive rabbit hole here but it's it's ludicrous to blame herding animals for any temperature change whatsoever and in fact it's ludicrous to think that um co2 is a problem anyway uh in fact it's been a lot higher and a lot lower than we have now and if it gets too low it's actually a terrible thing, and the higher it is, the more, um, the more plants actually absolutely love it and thrive and grow. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so back on back on yourself, um, how have you been eating, and how does that work at home with family? Yeah, so my wife, uh, she's. She's one of these uh, sort of. She's always been a he- she's always been a health nut, and so have I. In my, you know, that's why I try strange things like uh, you know raw vegan. Like, let's not just go vegan. Let's do it raw. <laughs> like let's let's not cook anything. Um, and, and so she's she's kept more of a sort of a paleo thing. That's right for her, uh, where she just. It's mainly unprocessed food, like for her. That's that's the big demon is processed food. She just sticks with uh, veggies, um, and uh, her mother is uh, totally vegan and absolutely healthy as well. By the way, um, she she she's uh, elderly and she walks hundreds of miles uh, a year. She's a she's a big walker and hiker, um, and so you know I. Again, I, I I don't want I I don't personally feel one thing is right for everybody, and um, you know everybody's unique and different. I do believe that meat has been absolutely slandered, um, and I think there's a massive benefit in most people to basically go cut out as much processed crap as possible and head towards meat. Because I've, geez, what what I've seen in the last um, five years from people that have done this diet is re- obviously reversed diabetes, t- type two diabetes, um, even um, I, you know type one. I I've seen some crazy stuff there too, uh, but um, uh, psoriasis, Parkinson's. Um, uh, you know, absolutely get stopped in its track. Cancer reversal. You know, I, I mean, I, I, there's no promises here, and it's not some sort of like if you do this, you will cure. It. That that's not what I'm saying. Um, but the the amounts of different things, and you're interviewing so many of these amazing stories, and this is why I love your channel. Is that if I see someone suffering from something, I pretty much type in the ailment and one of your videos will come up with someone that's already been through that and reversed it or stopped it in its tracks at least i think it's it's one of these things where when you have 
when when you go to this diet or this lifestyle, I should call it, because it's not really a diet. I, I feel that diet's the wrong sort of thing. Um, that you tend to see such extraordinary changes that you start to um, rethink also what the other lies that could have been propagated or mass psychosis. Because I, I don't know if it's lies, but people just believe belief systems that are wrong. So I'm not like, I, I'm not perfect. You know, I really love coffee, but I'll have a bulletproof coffee. So I'll put uh, butter and um, and some like MTC oil usually. I, I've even cut out MTC oil. It's usually butter or really high fat cream that I'll use. And I'll just whisk that with one of those little little stick whiskers into my coffee. And, uh, and that that will keep me satiated until about just after like two o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. So from the, yeah, so I just don't have any interest in eating. And, and what that does for me personally is just keep me in autophagy um, because I, I have a very light dinner because if I've eat a lot of steak before dinner, I'm um, oh, sorry, at dinner time before bed, sorry, then I, I won't sleep very well. Uh, generally, I, I just my my body's working too hard, so I'll tend to have bigger lunch and um, and and then just a little little bit, if if anything, for dinner. Um, so yeah, the, the my the bulletproof coffees really helped me, and I, I like having some sort of vice, <laughs> you know. And I, I feel like for people that are just getting into carnival, I think that this is a really good way to go because it's hard it, it it allows you to have some vice there because a lot of the vices that we have are bread and rice and carbs because the bacteria have, have taken over your brain to really mm. smell that smell that crispy crunchy bread uh with the soft inside uh instead the, the having still that vice of a coffee for me was was right and uh still is um and I, because I'm in Australia, the time zones are the arse end of every other time zone. So I'm either up really late or really early. So I like having the uh, the coffee to sort of, you know, bump me up. But um, but that that has really helped me by by having a coffee in the morning that's bulletproof with a lot of high fat content allows me to stay in autophagy. I think from everything that I've read, I, I, I'm apparently still in autophagy. Um, uh, during that time and then at lunchtime i'll have um, that if not i'll eat a lot of bacon and eggs uh, i try to get mm, uh, only because my wife is obsessed with the nitrates from the studies that she's read she doesn't like nitrate salts um i i want to actually get uh, away from uh, uh from the nitrated bacon because you can make your own by getting pork belly and just sprinkling salt on it uh, for like eight days and removing the water and it really dries up that pork belly. And then you can cut it and, uh, and actually uh, have that as, as bacon. And so you're, you're, uh, uh, you're making it without extra nitrates. I, I, I don't know from, from what like uh, Dr. Berry has said that nitrates aren't, such a big deal uh, in terms of how much there is uh, in in these these ways of curing meat, but uh, and apparently there's more in your saliva than there is anyway. But it's accumulate nitrates. I think are a cumulative thing, so they accumulate in your body. So yeah, uh, I don't know the, the, the studies that my wife has read about nitrates. Uh, you know, are are convincing to her. For me, not so much, but because of that, there's a because we have a small uh, a child, we we don't want to risk anything there. And so, if I'm going to feed ba bacon, she wants a nitrate free, so I try to source nit nitrate uh, free bacon. And yeah, that's fair enough. Um, you know, again, especially because you have a child in the house, you know, you want to you want to be making sure that everything's good. Yeah. Um, so, and regarding your daughter, is your daughter kind of more paleo kind of? Yeah. 
so my my wife uh wants you know she she just wants to have a, as many different things as possible for her uh, unfortunately as well the thing if anybody can definitely uh, appreciate this you go out and suddenly the friend of uh, has got a lollipop and gives it to you know the the friend's daughter gives the lollipop to the, you know you just can't stop it and look i i think the the human body is so phenomenal unless you've got some sort of chronic ailment in your child it's probably just easier to let them you know not you know try to control the environment at home uh but don't be uh, we try not to be you know too um too intense about it out, outside uh, obviously we try to reduce sugars as much as possible um, the fats are so important for a developing brain but mm. you also there's also societal pressures and and things that you you know you don't want to make your kid feel like a total outsider all the time i think it's, yeah it's, it's I, I i think i think the way you're approaching it is the um probably the the best way to do it i mean one one of the risks that you have to weigh up as well is if you're really heavy-handed about the no sugar at all and no you can't take that lollipop and that kind of thing there's mm -hmm. a big risk they're going to swing complete opposite way and just you know as yeah. they're growing up they're just going to uh get very rebellious and you know go even harder on that stuff well, that's it. I, and I've really found the best way of parenting is being a role model. You know, no, dad doesn't eat sugar. No, I, why? I don't, I don't eat it. I don't think it's very good for you. And, um, you know, and, and you know, uh, yeah, I'll say, look, you're only allowed one. You can have the one Easter egg, you know, whatever, not, not 10. And, oh, it's Easter. Okay. You can have five. Yeah. But, you know, um, it, it, it's it's just about being the role model rather than the enforcer. Um, I'm a big fan of peaceful parenting uh, and uh, um, building guardrails, but not uh, being some sort of because I said so. You know, just rather, you know, rather than saying, hey, say thank you, say please. Instead, I say thank you and I say please. and children automatically copy yeah and yeah i i can see it in my, my daughter's seven i can see it in her you know like she never used to be a big she was never a big meat eater never into it you know but just watching me over the last two years like now she loves a mm -hmm. steak when we got to a barbecue restaurant she's like she'll she'll have kind of a little kid's plate or whatever but she's like she's looking at me all the time going can you make me some beef can I have some? Yeah. Can I have some? Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. just it, it it does rub off, you know. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, um, metastasize the good, you know, by by being a role model. By just this is what I eat. This is what Dad eats, and uh, and yeah, uh, exercise. Same thing for that, you know. Why tell them go and exercise? Oh, no, I, I just exercise, and they'll go. Ah, oh, look, I want to do some yoga. Or I want to do some weights, or I want to, you know, whatever you're into. Yeah, um, yeah. They just they want to follow, right? So they want to yeah. go. Oh, that looks different. Never tried that before. I want to get into that. Oh, I quite like it. Okay, I'll keep doing it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I think the hardest thing for a lot of people is getting into carnivore when they've they've heard about it and how do you onboard into that i'd be interested how did you dave how did you onboard into it i i fell into it um you know um <laughs> i i went keto to um get a like to get alcohol out of my system and to to get off sugar um yeah. and um just from keto kind of fell into carnival mm. um yeah because yeah, i, I found keto much harder <laughs> than carnival uh yeah i mean i've uh, for me keto is much harder because uh, i've been on and off it over the years so many times and i think mm. it's because there, there's so many options there's more things to think about and you know and 
just like regular dieting, there's still a lot of preparation, you know? Yeah. Um, unless you are moving towards carnivore. And exactly. So. The preparation and c counting, like it's not calorie counting, but you're counting carbs, carb counting. It's just as annoying. It's like, huh, how many am I allowed? Uh, five peanuts? Uh, uh, this, you know, uh, t t some, you know, it just, it's too, for me, it was just like, oh, steak. <laughs> you know it's easy and, and how many doesn't matter as much yeah as you want. i mean it, it works if you can be strict enough with yourself and you're not going to be tempted by those kind of keto snacks and all that kind of thing but mm. it's just yeah i i'm i'm way too lazy yeah you know? mm. what one thing that's that i've really struggled with and this is my only bit that i really apart from coffee <laughs> that I, uh, I I cheat on is I do have like a coconut yogurt because I, I find I'm so salted um, that uh, I usually eat either cow yogurt or like a high fat one or a high fat coconut yogurt. And that's, that's kind of my, my, my other vice because after a big salty steak, I'm just, <laughs> I don't want to drink water too much because I like having the acids in my stomach to consume all the meats that I've eaten. So I don't want to like drown and like dilute that too much. So um, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm alkalizing with the yogurts anyway, but, um, uh, but yeah, it, it's that, that, that is something I do enjoy a little bit of here and there. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I think there's also that risk of becoming super dogmatic about it or worrying about the dogma you know like i think mm. if it works for you i mean just yep. if it's working and you know the trouble with me is i know my personality and i can't do mm. that stuff because mm. you know it starts with the yogurt and it ends up yes. under a box of krispy kreme donuts you know <laughs> 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 but but oh, i wow. mean if it's working for you then you know yeah. and yeah, yeah. there's no negatives so i don't see a problem with it yeah, I, I, onboarding though, I, I feel specifically for older people because they they they're stuck in their ways, and that's where I understand doctors. Now, my my mother was a music teacher, and uh, she was a singing teacher, and she could tell straight away who was doing the homework and who wasn't. And ninety percent, oh, I think it was probably eighty twenty rule here. Eighty percent of people came the next week, didn't do any homework, didn't do any practice. She could just tell. And I think this is the same with people when they go to the doctor. If the doctor said, well, just eat meat. And, you know, they're like an old school, just done, you know, eating their way of life the whole time. They're going to go home 80% of them, probably more, and not change. And then they're going to go sue the doctor because they didn't fix them. Whereas it's easier for the doctor to just go, keep doing what you're doing, take this pill. Because A, I get paid by the pharmaceuticals, and B, uh, I know you're probably going to do that more than changing your entire outlook on life and, <laughs> and diet and lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and the, so, problem, the problem with most of the people that would go beef, we would actually take the doctor's advice and start eating meat, they would still probably have a serving of chips on the side or something like that. Yep. Or, you know, they'd still probably put it in a steak sandwich or something, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, and, and it's... I, I think the problem with carnivore is that it's actually a really dangerous diet if you add carbs in there as well. Because all of a sudden, you're piling in the fat. And then the carbs, your body's going, oh, I'll just use this sugar up first and uh, let me store all this cholesterol in the arteries for a while and the salts and the stuff. So if you do do carnivore, it's really important not to add carbs in there at all because you probably head quick quickly into a grave and yeah. so you know i and that's what keeps me from not adding any uh, as little sugars as possible because i don't i you know i don't care going to the doctor doing my bloods and it come back with really high cholesterols because i know i haven't got the sugars in there to to make it a bad thing or to destroy the cholesterol and make it unfunctional and, um, and force my body to store it. So, um, 
so so yeah that that's what's dangerous is that they don't understand how how uh strict you do need to be on this hey you got to go high fat high protein then just don't have any of those sugars, whether they're carbohydrate form or or straight ring um, sugars, and uh, and so yeah, it's that 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 the, the, the that's the hard thing of getting people that are specifically in a dog in a old school dogmatic. Ah, oh, just have some fries. Ah, oh, I have my beer with my every night, or have a nice coffee, or uh with sugar or you know it's you just need to go and nah, this is a whole change and i did that by just going one day i was at a steakhouse and i just went you know what i'm just gonna try eating meat for a month you know and uh and that's the other good thing compared to keto or compared to veganism for instance not every rest like pretty much every restaurant will serve some meat like pretty much unless you're at a specific vegetarian restaurant but pretty much every restaurant will serve you up a steak. So it's very, very easy compared to being a vegan. You have to like, uh, they, they don't do that. Oh, what sauce? Oh, I'm also this and I can't have that. And um, instead it's like, oh, you you have, um, you know, you, uh, I was at an Asian place the other day and they, I said, oh, I just want the duck. <laughs> No, none of the curry, you know, just give me two servings of the duck. It's a bit more expensive because, you know, they're like, oh. Yeah. Um, oh, that's another thing I found, Dave, is that once you go carnivore, you start to realize how much of the food that the major majority of people eat is just filler. If you take, for instance, I don't know, a beef curry, there's like five bits of little bits of beef, a, bit, a couple of carrots and some beans. The rest is rice and sauce. And so it, the, the amount of nutrient that people are getting is so little, but they feel satiated. And then the body is consuming all these sugars and trying to convert all these carbohydrates for the rest of the night rather than actually taking the core uh, proteins and converting them to amino acids and, and enjoying and, and rebuilding your cell structure and everything else that's needed. Instead, it's just trying to cope with these carbohydrates and make sure it's used as energy or, or convert it to fat um, uh, bef before it heads into the brain and starts destroying brain cells. So it's, uh, it, it, it's just amazing seeing how much of the food is filler. If you go to a pizza, mo most of it is just bread. If you go to eat Asian pasta, it's just a little bit of like there's there's hardly any actual goodness in in most food. It's all like it's all filler. It's all filler. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting you say that about pizza because when you think about it, yeah, it's just like it's just a sandwich without a top on it. That's it, you know. And <laughs> people used to. People used to pay thirty bucks for one of those things. It's <laughs> it's a th used to. They still do. Yeah. And oh, really? Inflation. Oh, yeah. Pe wow. People, pe pizzas are so expensive. Uh, I mean, so inflation my, in general. My image of Australia is the five dollar pizza. That's no, no more thing. I don't know. It's been too long since I've eaten pizza. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I actually, uh, I had, I had one about uh, four months ago, and two days later massive psoriasis all over my skin uh, it was just came back with a vengeance and uh those, yeah. those are always good uh you know kind of constraints kind of so that you can quickly okay yeah well i'm not doing that again not doing that again no no it's mm. uh it's hard mm. and you imagine like this is stuff that's happening on a visual but you can look in the mirror and see wow look at the inflammation like it's literally burning it was hot I was like, ah, oh, I feel like I've been burned. Um, imagine a, some, a lot of people, a lot of people, th there's no visual cue. It's happening inside. So yeah. they're like, uh, all this inflammation is happening in, I don't know, on uh, some sort of organ or, or wherever. Yeah. And, and they don't notice until they get cancer or something terrible happens because their body's just dealing with all this internal inflammation that they're not seeing. They, they're looking healthy. You know, so 
that this is why it sneaks up on a lot of people when they eat badly because it's some people it's not visually a cue like it is. So I, mm. I could say sometimes, hey, it's actually lucky that if you've got an ailment that you can see or feel because it means, hey, that's the oil light. Do something. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I love that analogy. I'm going to be stealing that. So Go um... for it. Go for it. <laughs> I hope it's not trademarked. No, um... no. It's a totally open, free and open source. <laughs> So, Joshua, how do we reach out to you? Do you have a YouTube or a website? I see you got the website linked in there, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is my project. I, it's just it's on by default because I, I do a bunch of interviews. I'm always giving talks um, mm. about uh, about economic theory and about um, um, crypto and stuff. And and we we uh, we're building a, a decentralized finance pro protocol at the moment. And uh, but uh, yeah, keep up with my more general ramblings at my twitter uh, or x uh it's at j shigala s uh, so it's j s c i g a l a uh follow me on there and uh, and have a chat with me you know th let, let's talk about this because i think it's it's just beautiful to uh that that more mainstream people and this is where i really give thanks to well yourself dave for doing the countless videos but some of these big names as well like jordan peterson and and his daughter for uh, really making it mainstream and, and allowing people to lower their cognitive dissonance for a minute and go, wow, that worked for you? Oh, okay, well, maybe, you know, I've been suffering with this. Uh, maybe it will work for me. And and getting away from uh, this these, this sort of veil of, of uh, mm, disinformation turned mm, into full belief and and cognitive dissonance trying to remove that so yeah thanks for all the great work you've 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 done cheers well um yeah i'll link to i'll link to your twitter and and your site below and uh, i appreciate you coming on joshua and sharing your story thank you so much thank you dave cheers <laughs>